glad to have you back. It's Mushaka, and I have an exclusive interview with G Easy. You know him. Random, when it's dark out, he's blowing up. He just had an amazing conversation in his dressing room. We're getting ready for him to go on stage. He's on tour. We skied here. It's all happening. Check it out. But what I loved learning about you is, and I don't know, some may know, some may not know, is mm. you started rapping at 12, 13, made your own album covers, yeah, sold mixtapes out of your backpack at, for yeah. five dollars. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you were hustling back then. Yeah. So now to that point with the song Random, mm -hmm. and you say. I'm tr I had to go make that funding. I'm yeah, trying to yeah. be great at something. Do you feel yeah. like you're living a full circle moment from young Gerald to... Yeah. I, I mean, there's definitely moments like that every now and then. You stop and like, you're like, wow, like this is kind of like full circle, like what we talked about. And now it's like kind of coming together. Like, like even down in like New York. New York is very, obviously a very like Connected. significant place. Yeah, to, to the culture, like to the world in general, but specifically like hip hop, like, and it's like historically been, you know I mean, for West Coast artists and their music or whatever to like to travel here and to do something here. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, for me, like I would, I would come here. I remember playing my first show at Webster Hall. Yeah, like a hundred to yeah. 150 people. Yeah, and we didn't sell it out. And I was mad, like, cause if you don't sell out a show in New York, it doesn't matter if it's 300 people at Webster Hall Studio, or if it's, you know, 3,000 right. at Terminal 5, the same two words sold out. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, and it to have never have like, it just wasn't popping like other cities were. Like I could go to the Bay or LA or like, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. a Denver or a Salt Lake or a Phoenix and, it, and you know what I mean? Be moving tickets and New York would just be so slow. So like for the music to travel, you have those moments where you take it in, but I never like, get too caught up on it. I'm always thinking like, all right, what's next? Like, um, you know. Well, to that point of, you know, not selling at Webster Hall right away. And then when you were on tour and you like didn't have gas money to get to the mm -hmm. next place, like all those real moments that have cultivated into now, what are the things that you told yourself? Cause you've, you, you've always been very determined. Like this is going to yeah, work no matter yeah, what. Like, yeah. In those moments where things just weren't working, are there sources of inspiration, books, people that you went to to just like, Keep you going. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's, it, it's tough to say. It's like it was just. It was like it was in my bones. Like all, all we knew was go. There was no mm -hmm. plan B. There was no fallback. There was no other like. It wasn't like well, shit. If this don't work, I'm gonna just go move back home. Like where? What? You know what I mean? Like uh, my mom had just lost her job. Like she was struggling to get it. You know what I mean? Like I'm like well, shit. You know, I have to make this work. So it was just, way. yeah, yeah. So, I, but I think it's it's kind of like human instinct. Like when you really have to, you you find a way to you figure know it out. figure it out. Yeah, figure it out, people. Yeah. Figure it out. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, I mean, like it, it was just like I I enjoy every aspect of this from like being in the studio. I'm happy, like creating. If I'm on stage, I'm happy. Like that's where I like come to life. Like I'm happy. Like like being on the road with friends. Like right. every aspect of this, I wouldn't trade for anything. So as long as I was making enough to keep going, it wasn't like, you know, shit. We're staying yeah. at you know Motel Six or Holiday Inn. Why can't we be staying at this? Like but there was never a moment of like I can't. I don't know if I could do this. Like I I you know I just have a mm -hmm. come to something moment. But no. Nah, nah, cause it was always like a step forward. Right. If I ever regressed and started to lose it, and I'd be like, then I was maybe like, well, I don't know. I mean, that that's never something I've ever it wasn't wanted to feel. Path then, right? Yeah, right. yeah. Um, so I want to do a decoding of G Easy with uh, the song One of Them because mm -hmm. I love that song. Thank you. And not so much because of the material. I mean, you see that Lambo? I need one of them. <laughs> but it's more so like I have always felt since I was young, like, real mm. talk, like, I never felt like I was one of them. I was always right. wanting to be in New York. I was born in Southern Africa, but grew up in Texas, but mm. never felt like I fit in and was yeah. one of them. And I've always had these grander-than-life desires. Yeah. But at what point did you realize that I'm not one of them? Man, it's weird. It would have been, like, 12 or 13, 14, like, 
when I was like really like falling in love with music and, and the idea of making it and writing and like it was like I just felt like in the grand scheme like the long run mm -hmm. out of the other kids my age like everybody else like outside of like my circle my homies like everybody else that was doing music even if there were steps ahead of me I had this like it's kind of in the back of my head almost like I had an ace wow. you know what I mean the whole like I like I knew like in the long run I would take it farther right the farthest and it's like you that. could like yeah yeah I was like because if you want to do it then try to be great if not why bother like right. if you don't want it all then just you know what I mean That's why I got this interview. I was go like, like I want great right yeah <laughs> um <laughs> man so yeah. I just I just like I don't know yeah. that was always kind of there even when it hella just would not have appeared that way from For the sure. outside looking in um there's a book that I really love by Malcolm Gladwell um mm -hmm called Outliers. Yeah. You know, and it, he talks about the whole principle of 10,000 hours and beating at your craft, and I love that he's the example of the Beatles, because you're mm. a Beatles fan. Yeah. Gained inspiration from them. To that point, us talking about your journey, how much time you've put in, like, do mm. you feel like you're a master at your craft, seeing that you have technically put in 10,000 hours? Yeah. yeah nah, like, I, I wouldn't say that. Like, I would say, like, when you're like truly in love with a craft mm -hmm. no matter where you get you're pushing yourself to be better at it right. so you would never just reach some status of like whatever you deemed that benchmark to be or that level or that like place and just say okay cool I'm gonna chill here right. like if you want to be you know what I mean and you push yourself to be like great at something you want to like never be content or complacent mm -hmm. within your your the world of your craft the technique like your approach your perspective like your you know what I mean like for sure like the mind of a perfectionist is always yeah perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um so also to that point your song everything will be okay like I love how you use the power of music mm. to be transparent to do something so private publicly mm. but has that um kind of planted this seed to say okay for future records i'm gonna dig into the young jail files and and do that thought of exposing yourself and we kind of mm. make things bigger than it is and then it happens and people are so receptive which i feel like yeah is what's happened with you but do you feel more inspired to go deeper well i mean like when you have stories that's the power of music is to tell stories especially yeah. hip-hop is like all stories. Yeah, yeah, it's stories, you know, and it's like people like having not like whether or not they've encountered anything even remotely close to that particular story. In one way or another, they like identify in a sense, whether it's with like, you know, this aspect or this aspect or this aspect of have gone through, they frame their situation and you know what I mean, find oh, ways yeah. to identify with. So it's like the power of storytelling is, is, you know, connects with people, but you can only ever tell like, what you know, what you've been through, what right. you've seen, what you've like witnessed, like that's what people connect to. That yeah, realness. yeah, right. you can't, you know what I mean? You can't fictionalize something and just make it up. So, right. um, so speaking of Young Gerald Files, I love that you are really good with impersonations. Like you do a mean E40, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and you also do a, a pretty dope British accent. Like you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I'm actually from London originally. Okay. I was, yeah, really? I'm a vampire, and I was born in the 1800s. So and quiet. about 10 years ago, I decided to change my so my cheeky. life path. I got tired of living in London and slaying all these hipster girls in oh, Shoreditch, really? and so I decided what's your, what's your, um, that I wanted to become a rapper. So oh, really? I changed so my path. Easy. You know what I mean? But and what's I, your London Tumblr girl? You know, here we have Soho, but what mm -hmm. in London? It's Shoreditch all day. It's all day. You know what I mean? It's all day. Yeah, bro. I'm oh, in a. Really? Oh my God. Luck of the berry, sweet of the juice. <laughs> I probably sound terrible right now. I know, right? We're like things. Um, okay, so I want to debunk a myth that I think is a myth that you have no game, Mr. You say that repeatedly, and I'm like, okay, you sing the song, a lot of that, and you know, I mean it, really. You have no game. I, like, he has no game. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's like, I, I'm like, I would know what to say. I would just look at somebody but and just communicate with my eyes. And we skied here, G. Like, you guys. Did you ski here? I straight yeah, up. I saw people out there skiing. That shit was so crazy. Skiing my way here? Yeah. For you to say you don't have game? Man, I got a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. I think you got a little bit more. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, to cheers I, I, you. you know, I, I do what I do. 
Yeah, I'll do alright. Yes, right. yes, you do. To cheers you and to celebrate you and to celebrate the sold out, man. You got sold out. Yeah. Three nights and we skied here. One yeah. show was postponed. Added another one. Dude, so proud of you. Yeah. I got you a gift. Yeah. Is it your favorite? It's a whiskey. Oh, wow. Thank you, darling. And I want to cheers. Let me to drink this. You can do the honors. Um, and this is to you. And this is to many more blessings. Because we ain't one of them. This is, thank you. Cheers, guys. Check out G Easy on tour. The best.